Next, we will discuss the class of functions called exponential. Let's consider a function made by raising some value b greater than 1 to power x. For example, it can be 2 to the power x. And let's graph this function. If this is your first time graphing this function, the best approach is to create a table of inputs and outputs. Since we are familiar with the exponentiation, we should be able to easily figure out the outputs for some small integer values and plot the points on the coordinate plane and then connect the dots with a line to finally obtain the graph of the function. We can easily graph a variety of functions with different bases that satisfy the criteria. We notice that all of them have some common properties. For example, the y-intercept is always 1. On the left, the graph approaches the x-axis, and on the right, the graph goes up indefinitely. Alternatively, let's consider a function made by raising some value b between 0 and 1 to the power x. For example, it can be 1 half to the power x. And let's graph this function. If this is your first time graphing this function, the best approach is to create a table of inputs and outputs. Since we are familiar with the exponentiation process, we should be able to easily figure out the outputs for some small integer values and plot the points on the coordinate plane and then connect the dots with the line to finally obtain the graph of this function. We can easily graph a variety of functions with different bases that satisfy the criteria. We notice that all of them have some common properties. For example, the y-intercept is always 1. On the left, the graph goes up indefinitely, and on the right, the graph approaches the x-axis. It is hard not to notice the relation between the graphs of the exponential functions with bases 2 and 1 half. Using the properties of exponents, we can show that 1 is just a reflection of the other one through the y-axis. We discussed exponential functions, their graphs, and their properties.